Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Okay, welcome everyone to a new episode of Myth Bust Monday. Uh, this week we're going to have a look at the idea that drinking alcohol is hindering your fat loss or weight loss. And we'll also touch on a few other things like its effect on building muscle and testosterone levels. Um, so I'd like to look at this on two different levels. First, we're going to have a look at what happens in your body when you consume alcohol acutely. So say on a night out when you're drinking with the purpose of getting intoxicated. Um, and secondly, we're going to look at what happens over time. Um, so if drinking becomes persistent and consistent. Uh, first, I think it's important to acknowledge that most people should realize that overconsuming any nutrient will lead to fat storage, um, since net fat balance is ultimately determined by net energy balance, meaning if you're eating in a caloric surplus, you'll gain weight, and if you're eating in a caloric deficit, you'll lose weight. And that's regardless of where those calories are coming from, whether from apples or say beer. And this fact, while the source of a lot of disagreement on the internet, uh, isn't actually controversial uh, within mainstream scientific discourse. However, I think the more interesting question is not whether or not alcohol somehow breaks energy balance and thermodynamics laws, uh, but rather whether or not alcohol is inherently more fattening than other nutrients. Uh, because while it is true that calories in versus calories out is the main thing driving changes in body weight, uh, changes in body composition can be a bit more complicated. So to answer that question, I think we need to first understand what exactly happens when alcohol enters your body. Okay, so when you drink alcohol, it's first absorbed in your bloodstream and then makes a beeline straight to the liver. Uh, in fact, your body handles alcohol metabolically quite similar to how it handles poison. This means that metabolism of all the other nutrients you've eaten are gonna be put on the back burner until alcohol is eliminated. And since there's no store for alcohol in the body, unlike carbs and fats, as long as alcohol is in your system, all carbs and fats are gonna be preferentially shuttled towards storage. This is especially the case for dietary fat, where we see that fat oxidation or burning is severely blunted following alcohol consumption. And I think this is where the whole idea that alcohol is making you fat is coming from. Now here, I think it's important to clarify that alcohol itself isn't making you fat, at least not directly. In fact, it's actually quite the opposite of that. Uh, it gets burned right away. That's just that the other excess calories are so much more readily stored as fat when alcohol is present. And since this is especially the case with dietary fat, uh, if you are going to be drinking heavily, uh, I'd recommend lowering your fat intake for that day. Uh, but the main thing that you really want to avoid is a post-drinking binge. Um, this is a surefire way to accumulate a lot of new fat in a short period of time. And when you consider alcohol's effect on lowering inhibitions, um, post-drinking food binges uh, really can be pretty difficult to resist for a lot of people. Um, so depending on your level of willpower while intoxicated, uh, it might simply be better for you to just avoid heavy drinking if fat loss is your priority. Another strike against alcohol is that experimental studies show that individuals often don't compensate afterward for calories consumed from alcohol. Um, so when you drink, chances are uh, those extra calories from alcohol will just end up getting tacked on to your total intake for the day making it much easier to push you into a caloric surplus. Um, but it's actually even worse than that for alcohol. Uh, one 2010 review on alcohol and appetite described alcohol as the least satiating energy source. And worse still, some studies have shown alcohol to magnify the ability of food to stimulate appetite. So not only is it terrible at making you feel full, uh, it might actually make you feel even hungrier once you do start to eat. Um, so between all these factors, um, the sort of metabolic hijacking, uh, lowered inhibitions, empty calories, and just terrible satiating ability, you can see that alcohol isn't exactly your friend uh, when it comes to fat loss. Uh, but I think that with all of that said, uh, it ultimately does come down to moderation. Um, assuming a net caloric deficit is in place, uh, having the occasional alcoholic beverage or even splurge really shouldn't curtail your fat loss progress. Um, actually, in my own coaching experience, uh, I've noticed that the occasional night out can often help with fat loss, especially if you're feeling a little more stressed or bound up from the diet. Uh, many dieters, myself included, will notice a swoosh in body weight uh, in the few days following a night of drinking. Um, but of course, if that drinking gets excessive uh, to the point that it pushes you into a caloric surplus, then it's of course going to hinder your fat loss progress. Uh, but like we said, the 
The good question isn't, can I drink alcohol and still lose weight? Uh, because the answer is obviously yes, uh, you can if you're in a caloric deficit. Um, I think the good question is, how is that affecting body composition? So to answer that question, I think we need to consider its impact on muscle mass. Uh, so let's start with testosterone. Interestingly, uh, light drinking in the range of two to three standard drinks uh, has actually been shown to boost testosterone in the range of 17% in men. And this might help explain the increase in libido that's often seen with light alcohol consumption. Uh, but given the very transient nature of this spike, I don't think it's likely to be doing much of anything anabolic. However, as you start to increase the dose of alcohol, uh, testosterone levels start to steeply decline. Uh, and one study that drew blood samples from drunken emergency room visitors found 45% lower testosterone in drunk men compared to controls. But I think most interestingly, about five-fold higher testosterone in drunk women. And the authors suggest that this is likely due to alcohol's inhibitory effect on testicular testosterone specifically. And this is an idea supported by multiple lines of evidence, collectively suggesting that if you don't have testicles, you don't really need to worry about alcohol's negative effect on testosterone. Of course, testosterone is a very powerful anabolic hormone. Uh, so from a muscle building perspective, you want it to be as high as possible. But what does the science have to say about alcohol and muscle growth directly? Well, the general trend of research seems to indicate that rates of muscle protein synthesis are suppressed by alcohol consumption. This is especially true in the post-workout period. And while a lot of this research has been done on rodents, uh, they're all showing the same general trend. And one 2014 human study from Parang colleagues found that heavy alcohol consumption in the range of eight to nine drinks post-workout reduced muscle protein synthesis by 37%. That's a pretty big drop. And they also found that even when protein was consumed in amounts shown to be optimally effective, the intake of alcohol still reduced muscle protein synthesis by 24%, indicating that even protein, some of the most anabolic stuff we have, uh, can't fully rescue the anti-anabolic effects of alcohol. Uh, but this study only tested male subjects. And similar to testosterone, the impact of alcohol seems to be sex specific. According to a new 2017 study investigating alcohol's effect on 10 men and nine women, although resistance training elicited similar mTOR signaling in men and women, alcohol ingestion seemed to only attenuate the mTOR signaling pathway in men. Um, so all this to me seems to suggest that if you are a woman, uh, you probably have much less to worry about from a muscle building perspective if drinking after training. But as interesting as all this acute data is, I would say the biggest potential downfall of drinking is its effect on performance the following day. Um, just how much it affects your training will be individual, and it'll depend on how much you drank. Uh, but through the combination of dehydration, hangover, and interrupted sleep, uh, a night of drinking really is working against you uh, the day after in the gym. Now, of course, uh, once in a while, this isn't going to derail your gains completely, uh, especially if you, say, schedule a planned rest day uh, the day after a night of drinking uh, and just really focus on rehydrating. Uh, but if it becomes a regular thing, uh, the potential for performance detriments combined with suppressed testosterone and reduced muscle protein synthesis, especially if you're a man, really could be holding you back, I think. Um, so as for whether or not the myth is busted, uh, I'd say with this one, it just really does depend um, even more than usual. Alcohol in moderation isn't likely to cause any significant fat gain or impair muscle growth, especially if caloric intake is controlled for. But I think in excess, it really is so much more likely to sort of slow your progress down on all fronts. And so I'm just gonna leave it at that for this one. I'll put a quick summary slide up here on the screen with the main practical takeaways, if you'd like to pause and go ahead and read that. And before we go, I wanna give a huge shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you guys don't know, Squarespace is an all-in-one website platform platform uh, where you can custom create your own website or your own online store. Uh, I just finished totally revamping uh, my own website on Squarespace and I'm really excited to show that to you guys soon. I think it looks awesome. They have really aesthetic designer templates and 24 hour customer service, uh, which I've personally found to be really helpful throughout this process. Um, so if you guys would like to get started with making your own website or your own online store, uh, you can go to squarespace.com forward slash nippered and that'll save you 10% off your first purchase. Um, so thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring the video. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you did like the video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you happen to be new. And I've got a new vlog on the way uh, next Monday. So I'm going to be alternating Mythbus Mondays every other Monday now. So June 11th will be my next Mythbus video. Um, so I'll see you guys all then.